Good evening, everybody. It's on or about 6.30, so I will call this meeting to order by acknowledging that we are meeting on Indigenous lands that have been inhabited from the beginning, most recently uh, by our friends, uh, the Mississaugas of Alderville. I would also ask everyone to remember that while council, <clears throat> while attending council meetings, whether you're a member of council, staff, or the public, it is mandatory that you use a face covering and to keep physical distancing of two meters from others. All chairs have been set, set in place for social distancing, therefore you are required to remain in your seat until vacating the building. Masks may be removed while seated, but you must wear your mask to vacate your seat, whether it is to approach the microphone or to use the restroom. If you are approaching the microphone to address council, um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, please remember to don your mask to approach the podium and microphone. You may remove your mask to speak, but you must wear your mask to return to your seat. If you need to adjust the microphone while at the podium, please remember to sanitize it after you have completed your time at the podium. Uh, also, I'll ask everyone to please um, silence any electronic devices and we'll get underway now. With a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley, the Council amend the October 13th agenda to add bylaw for part lot control for Stallwood homes, and that will be under 8.5. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. Before I move into the approval of the amended agenda, I will note that uh, Deputy Mayor Vink has sent her regrets for this evening. And I will also note there are a couple of members around the horseshoe who may have to, due to back issues, uh, stand up from time to time. They're, they may be, but they're not necessarily angry with anything that's happening at the table. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council approve the October 13th, 2020 planning meeting as amended. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. Now I'll ask if there are any declarations of pecuniary interest, and if so, please state the general nature thereof. There are none noted. And we have one delegation this evening. Uh, Beverly Saunders, I don't see Beverly. Oh, no, that's, uh, oh. <laughs> that's why I don't see Beverly. Beverly Saunders from Echo View Consulting Services with regard to the zoning amendment for 140 Smith Street. That's the grant application. Is that you, are Beverly? You? I'm good, how are you? I'm well, thank you, welcome. Great. Um, first, I just wanna thank you for this opportunity to attend digitally. It's much appreciated during these times. Um, so I just briefly want to give a delegation regarding 140 Smith. It's first on the agenda. This is a rezoning application specific to three consents that were approved in May of this year. This rezoning is a condition of those consents that, as I said, were approved in May 2020. Uh, since the approval of the consent applications, our client has undertaken all of the work required to clear the conditions of consent. This is the final step in order to reach that. So to clarify, our client has prepared surveys for the property, uh, prepared a planting plan, which has been reviewed and approved by Lower Trent Conservation, and has paid for and submitted this rezoning application as the condition of consent. Uh, we would remind Council that the rezoning application and associated requirements under the Planning Act were addressed in the previous consent application and there have been no changes to the proposal of what was approved in May uh, 2020. <clears throat> it remains our opinion that the subject application meets all applicable planning policies, both local and provincial. Uh, in, because the lots will be agricultural, will not impact natural heritage and will not impede future development. As such, we respectfully uh, request that council consider recommending approval of the rezoning application uh, at, in accordance with the decision that was made in May 2020. And with that, I'll just leave it. And if you have any questions for me, I'm here. So uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Saunders. I will ask members of council if they have any questions or clarification for you. 
and there are none noted. So thank you very much. Thank you. And there's a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. The council received the delegation from Beverly Saunders of Ecoview Consulting Services regarding 140 Smith Street zoning amendment application. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. And Madam Clerk, I need a motion to enter into the statutory public meeting. I don't see one. And one to, oh yeah. <laughs> So next on our agenda is a statutory public meeting. I just need a motion to enter into that. And the clerk is drafting that motion now. So moved, Mike Cicerini, Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Tadman. Yep. Is there a seconder? Councilor Rowley. Thank you. It's moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Rowley. The council move into the statutory public meeting at 6.36 p.m. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. So we have one item in, a sta in the statutory public meeting this evening. It is with regard to file number Z06-2020, a zoning bylaw amendment application. The owner is Gail Grant. The location is part lot 32, concession A, being part one of registered plan 39R, 13980, 140 Smith Street. And uh, Mr. Ty isn't here. So Mr. Walsh, I imagine you'll be fielding these questions. Uh, Mr. Walsh, by what method and on what date was notice of this zoning bylaw amendment application given? Uh, notice of the application and the public meeting was given by first class mail to all property owners within 120 meters of the public property. And notice is also circulated to all the prescribed agencies under the planning act, as well as a placard or a sign notice posted on site. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Walsh. And would you please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and what it would accomplish? The purpose of the zoning bylaw amend amendment is to one, fulfill the conditions that were laid out in the previous consents, B23-2019, B24-2019, and B25-2019. Uh, council approved those consents provisionally. One of the conditions uh, outlined in that decision was that a zoning bylaw amendment be completed. So here this uh, zoning bylaw amendment is uh, to fulfill that condition. The zoning bylaw itself would rezone the lands from the rural zone to a rural exception zone. Uh, rural exception number 57 and rural exception number 58 for the retained lands, as well as establish environmental protection zone. The rural exception zones are intended to address specific lot frontage and area provisions. And the environmental protection zone is introduced in re to reflect an EIS that was completed as part of the approval process on the consents. Thank you very much. And does the owner or agent wish to make any comments? No, there are none noted. I'm getting a shaking of head from the owner, just so everyone knows. Are there persons present who have questions or comments regarding the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application? None in the gallery, any on Zoom? No, thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding the proposed zoning bylaw amendment from members of council? Councilor LeBlanc. Through you, Chair, to uh, Mr. Walsh. When I look at the map um, Schedule A on Schedule A for 2020, is the um, EP and the Environmental Protection Zone, because it is creek that is approaching on lot number one, one or three, the, the bottom lot. Is that the reason why? Uh, through the Mariner Council, there was an unidentified environmental feature on the site at the time of the consent. So the EP zoning now reflects that those uh, hydrologic features, I should say. And the Places to Grow Act requires that the hydrological features and functions be maintained. So the EP zone will direct structures away from that 
hydrologic function. Um, and the, the area is um, subject to the hydrological function is covered in that revised DP zone. The blue area is reflective of uh, a water course in the area that, as well. So there's two things going on there. It's the EP zone for the stream isn't shown in the uh, in the legend, the pattern legend, but you can see it in the left-hand legend. Supplementary. Yes. Go ahead. To your uh, yep. to the, the player, I walked this property with this map, and that that um, the wetland, the creek, the blue, is basically out by probably 100 meter by 75 meters. It should be further south and east. Of the property it comes down drains into the ditch and goes it doesn't go that far across the property and it's not as high up as what it is it starts just off and when i came to the end of it because i say it comes to an end i found that it was uh, a bubbling uh, um, spring okay so the blue line is out by about 75 meters too high and too close to the lots so it would give it its 30 meter buffer if that is the feature that they're talking about Uh, through the mayor, I'm afraid this predates me a little bit, uh, and uh, it's reflective of the conclusions of the EIS report as reviewed by the Lower Trent Conservation Authority. Um, some of the uh, locational issues may have been generally mitigated knowing that the building envelope for the sites are going to be closer to the road and whatnot, and so um, I think maybe the development plans the landowners have for the property did not turn on the precision of the EP zoning. Although I, I do have to say that uh, regrettably and con with some concern that it's not more accurate, it should, would have been better to catch it uh, now at the zoning bylaw amendment stage. But uh, if uh, the applicants wish to proceed because this has no bearing on their development plans, then then uh, we can do so. And the mayor seemed to get the head, uh, head nod saying they're in agreement. Um, otherwise it, it could be deferred and, and revised. Thank you, Councillor Blanc. I will give the applicant, uh, the owner and applicant opportunity to speak again, uh, coming up next, if there's no other questions from members of council. Uh, so she's, she's the owner's agent, so that will, she, she'll get an opportunity next if, um, if there's no other questions from members of council. Members of council? So I will go back to the owner, applicant, or agent for any final comments. And I understand, Ms. Saunders, you have a comment? Yeah, just to speak to that uh, point. So we are not, so the reason that the water course is reflected in that way is the that area associated with that water course is already zoned environmental protection. And so as a part of our application, we did not include justifications or changes to existing environmental protection areas. We only included additional environmental protection areas that are associated with a buffer from a significant woodland to the uh, east of the property and a wetland to the north of the property. And so we are only adding environmental protection areas, but we are keeping the remainder of the environmental protection uh, area that had already been uh, zoned. And so I think we're fine with the proposal as, as currently proposed, the new structures would be significant Quite, quite a bit farther away from these areas. And the environmental protection area would permit the existing house and, and, uh, and development that exists on the Requiem lots. So we are fine moving forward. All right, uh, anything further from the owner? In terms of final comments before we make a decision, no? Thank you. Mr. Walsh, do you have any final comments? No further comments, Mayor. Thank you. And does council wish to make a decision this evening? Yes. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that council receives the report regarding rezoning application Z06-2020 as prepared by the municipal planning consultants. Yeah, I'm working on it. And council, and further that council, 
Approve zoning bylaw amendment application Z06 2020 as prepared by the municipal planning consultants. Oh, I see the wording. Okay. Well, we're going to do it like that. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Is there any discussion? Councillor Anderson. Um, perhaps you could explain um, again, Mr. Tais was is really showing that it, he's not recommending this one one bit, <laughs> and uh, he did that before. And and in this in his summary here, which we haven't read out, but we've seen it, um, he's quite specific about how the county feels about it and about how we should be feeling about it. I wonder if you could explain it a clear for me, but perhaps one more time before we vote on this. Sure, so I'll turn the microphone over to Mr. Walsh, but I will remind council that we did approve the uh, severances on the condition that um, we approve a, a zoning bylaw amendment. So this is really a, a, a clerical matter at this stage because yeah. of the other approval. But Mr. Walsh, over to you. Uh, through the Mayor of Council. The planning um, intent through those recommendations is to maintain larger parcel size when being used for agricultural purposes. Um, the long-standing direction from the uh, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs is to maintain parcel size as large as possible so that farmers can adapt to unknown conditions going forward, unknown technology demands, unknown market demands, unknown other land use conflicts that might be at the perimeter of their, of their land holding. Uh, so when we go to put in standards into our official plans and zoning bylaws, we tend to articulate that through minimum lot areas. And so this was breaking the parcel down into lot areas that are smaller than what typically a farm would be. So the recommendation of denial at the consent stage, and again, at the zoning bylaw amendment here, was to remain consistent with that objective, to uh, make sure that to the lands can be uh, best suited for agriculture over the long term. Um, secondly, uh, because it's at the perimeter of the urban designation, it's also useful maintaining larger parcel sizes so that we can make sure the parcel can be efficiently built out when full services are available and the subdivision is made viable. Uh, so many official plans will have policies for lands at the margins of the urban designation. So an urban urban fringe policy, for example. Um, it doesn't take too many severances taking up frontage to really frustrate the efficient build out of the property for our subdivision. Uh, so uh, for those two reasons, I, I believe uh, the consultants had recommended denial. You're welcome. Anything further from members of council? Councilor Tadman. Just the fact that, as you said before, this this was all on the condition that we get the zoning bylaw changed. So I don't think we need to do a lot of argument at this point, but I do want to say that they have met all the conditions. They've spent a lot of money to get to this point. They have no intentions of turning this into a subdivision. And I don't blame them. It's always been agriculture now. Uh, Mrs. Grant just wants to make sure her children have a nice piece of land. So um, as far as I can see, uh, they've, they've had to go through a lot of hoops to get to this point. And I think it's, it's important that we get this passed tonight and not defer it longer. So if we can just call the vote, that would be great. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. Councillor Bateman. Uh, Councillor Tadman stole my thunder. Uh, I'll echo what she said, and if I could call for a recorded vote on it, please. You may. Anything further? Councillor Mark Bateman? Uh, yes to the zoning amendment. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes to the zoning amendment. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor is not here. 
Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you, everyone. And that ends the statutory public meeting portion. I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, second by Councillor Rowley. The Council rise from statutory public meeting October 13th, 2020 at 6.50 p.m. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. We'll go into planning and development reports. Our first report is with regard to site plan approval for the roof truss facility at 40 Butler Street. And Mr. Mr. Ty's not here. Mr. Walsh, we've read Mr. Ty's report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Uh, nothing further to add, Mayor. Thank you. With that, I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc. The Council receives the report regarding the application for slight site plan approval SP04-2020 proposed roof trust facility as prepared by the municipal planning consultants for information. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman. I had emailed uh, some questions. I believe I sent them to Mr. Walsh and Mr. Castleman. I just wanted to know if we had any clarification on the intent for the property with what the outside looks like right now. I, I know in the answer you said that under the planning act or under the zoning, whatever it was, sorry. I apologize if I said that wrong, that there is provisions for parking commercial vehicles, but right now there's over 22 and they're not commercial vehicles, they're trailers, so they wouldn't be classified as commercial. So would they fall under that or is this gonna be cleaned up by the new owner? Mr. Walsh? Uh, through the Mayor to Council, uh, yes, we'll be reviewing the, the site conditions through the course of approving the site plan. So the site plan agreement will probably have some provisions or clauses in it uh, directly dealing with how those trailers uh, get uh, get removed and the site generally cleaned up. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Bateman's been um, trying to fight this battle for a long time. Who is who is responsible for the cleanup of a place when it, it's, is it the buyer then or or do we still push for the, the, the other owner to clean it up? We have no idea, and it could be nothing in all those trailers, but I don't think they're building a trailer park there. And there's a lot of them there. And there's got to be something in them, most likely. Do we even know that what's inside of those trailers is safe? We're sitting, they're sitting beside a railway, railway track, and it could be absolutely anything in there, and it could be a real self um, safety and health issue. Uh, it's an eyesore around there. And um, can we get some guarantee, can we at least push for a, some kind of a, a promise that things will be cleaned up? And I don't even have a clue where those trailers go. If you have to get rid of them, where do they go? And if they're full of stuff, what happens? So there's a lot of questions I would like to be answered about because uh, I didn't count them, but there, is there 22? There must be 20 anyways. Yeah. Mr. Walsh, any comment? Mayor to Council, um, the, the trailers presumably will be part of the sale. You know, it's gonna be on the property and the new purchaser is going to want to either buy them for whatever reason and part of their purchase or make sure that they're disposed of which, whatever their interest is in. Um, but you know we have no way of knowing what the contents of them are currently and i really don't know that we have uh, authority to go in and to private property and start uh, taking apart the trailers either so i think we're just going to have to work with the new new land, landowner and, and see what we can do about the trailers and making sure that they are um, functioning as uh, as trailers not as storage units Councilor tadman so this always comes back to um, how do we regulate uh, property so that it meets the standards of the municipality? Like that has gone on for so long now and it's such an eyesore that, uh, you know, at what point can we move in normally in a situation like that? Well, through the mayor, 
Uh, we have a property standards bylaw, for example, and we really rely on uh, submissions of a complaint before acting on our property standards bylaw and preferably the complaints in writing and, and not all, all persons are comfortable doing that. But for enforcement purposes, it's usually what we need um, when it comes to, uh, to uh, um, uh, you know, a court setting. And we, need, we need evidence, we need to act with uh, some, some material evidence. And um, so we have a property standards bylaw. If the property standards bylaw is remiss in some way, that's making it uh, not uh, applicable to some obvious situations from the time, then we have to update or amend our property standards bylaws. And uh, so in the event of not having a direct complaint, then we probably would not be acting until having that in hand. Uh, but it doesn't mean we, we can't, we can, but the uh, but getting ultimate enforcement might be more challenged without having it. Councillor Anderson? Um, wouldn't it be appropriate that as part of the site plan, those trailers uh, are either accepted that they're there or they're not? And if they are, uh, wouldn't the fire department have privilege to know what is being stored in those fire in in the, excuse me not those fire trucks but in those in those trucks um because a good point was made it could be a safety issue but storage uh, is it zone is it is it being used as storage now is the, the property or is it and a nice site plan like they have i like to see uh, 10 new jobs come to the area and i i like to see it cleaned up and turned into a a viable operation, but um, are those trailers going to stay there and are they part of the site plan? Um, I don't see them on, on the plan. So if they're not on the plan, how can we vote for this to be approved? Mr. Walsh? To the mayor. So there's a question in there. <laughs> yeah, I think you so heard I think, it. I think your, uh, your your point of uh, some of the authority of the fire officials in entering a property, making sure it's safe, is a good one. I don't know the full scope and extent of that, and I can circle back to the fire chief to to confirm. They do have some special authorities uh, given to them by the fire marshal of Ontario. Um, and uh, secondly, to your other point about uh, concern about the status going forward, we will simply work with new landowner and convey council's uh, concerns. Can we include in, in a site plan um, that the the ownership is required to remove the, uh, the existing unusable trailers? My understanding is from one of the scrap metal dealers in the community that they are garbage and that the scrap metal people won't touch them because there's too much work to get what little value is out of them. So they, they really are landfill, unfortunately. Uh, and that's why I think we see them piling up because the cost to landfill them would be at, would be huge. So my concern is a new landowner is gonna come in. Uh, we're gonna provide them with a site plan. And I think the same concern exists um, with my friends on council here that the, the cost to landfill those items will be too much. And then, and then where are we? So can we, in, or is it possible to include in, in a, an official agreement with the new landowner that they have to uh, remove those, those products from, the, from their property? Um, usually site plan deals with the destructions of facilities on sites more so than the parking of vehicles. Parking tends to be a matter of the zoning bylaw and property standards bylaw. But um, I would think that you know, through, a, through an agreement, through a site plan agreement, we would be able to do that. Uh, once council enters into an agreement with special clauses dealing with site conditions, uh, that my inkling is we would have that capacity to do so. Thank you. Councillor Tadman. Thank you once again, Mayor. Um, back to the property standards. Um, uh, we, as councillors and mayor, um, campaign to and hopefully get in to serve the residents and the residents come to us with their complaints uh, lots of times and they don't necessarily always feel that they want to put the complaint in for a variety of reasons so i guess my question is then can we 
as a counselor or counsel put a complaint in and then can the bylaw officer act on that? Mr. McGee. Uh, through you, your worship, under the property standards bylaw, um, council can, uh, I guess, direct staff for a subject property. I, I don't know the wording. I can send it to you tomorrow. So, yes, collectively, council can get together, decide if this is, needs to be acted upon through property standards, and then direct staff to do what they need to do. But an individual member of council, as a citizen in the community, could fill out that complaint form. They can do that as well, yes. And, and that would uh, that would launch an investigation from your office as well, correct? That's correct, yep. Yeah. Uh, Councilor LeBlanc. Through your chair to Mr. Walsh and uh, members of council. Uh, <clears throat> in 19, uh, 1994, 93, I was hired when it was old, the old Ontario uh, Hydro Building, then Canada Case bought it. And I did the phase one, phase two. So during the purchasing, uh, basically, they had my documents and they asked me to attend a site with the consultant that was doing the phase one, phase two. And they happened to have those trailer doors open while I was on the property because I showed them what I found where we had removed the underground fuel tank and stuff. And I showed them where the sampling was done and the transformers. Uh, basically, those trailers were all full of office furniture when I was there uh, this summer. But also the grass hadn't been cut. It was almost two and a half to three feet high. Okay. So I was there. Thank you. Good information. Is there anything further? Oh, really, we're just we're just um, here to receive for information a site plan agreement. So I'm going to carry on down the road if that's a, Mr. unless you have something pertinent to that, Mr. McGee. I just wanted to basically back up what Councillor Block LeBlanc has stated that it's furniture. It's furniture inside. For some reason, it's become a warehouse. So there's well, not any hazardous materials there. Very well, thank you. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Next item is with regard to Hamilton Woods West subdivision phase three. And Mr. Walsh, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Uh, nothing more, Mayor. So I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, second by Councillor Rowley, that Council receives a staff report regarding the Hamilton Woods subdivision regarding agreements for pre-servicing and model home construction. The Council receive and accept the pre-servicing and model home agreements as circulated subject to additional information being received to complete the checklist as referenced herein and direct staff to provide copies of said agreements to Gordon Toby Developments Limited. That council directs the municipal solicitor to undertake the registration of the, of the council approved pre-servicing and model home agreements and the solicitor be authorized to revise if needed for purposes of registration. And that council enacts the required bylaws and upon receiving the information as, as described in two above, authorizing the mayor and clerk to sign the pre-servicing agreement and model home agreement on behalf of the municipality of Brighton. Uh, and before I open the floor to any questions, uh, a couple of members of council have approached me with regard to an item we met uh, in closed session about. Um, this developer was contracted to assist uh, the municipality with the maintenance of a stormwater management facility. And as part of that whole process also expand the stormwater management facility. And there's some concerns uh, that have happened um, with that contract. So without delving into the closed session information, and I don't see Mr. Toby here. So I'm, I'm, I guess, I guess the members of council who approached me were concerned that we would be entering into an agreement with this developer, knowing that we have some outstanding concerns with some other issues. And I guess I'm, I'm looking to you, Mr. Walsh, or you, Mr. Poole, to advise whether um, we would be wise to carry on with this motion tonight or whether we might be best to defer it to another meeting. Again, without, without disclosing the, the closed session information. <laughs> uh, through the mayor, um, staff were aware of uh, the other issue, of course, it did not see a direct connection between 
that that uh, that matter and this phase three registration felt feeling that they were two separate matters um, and so did, you don't see the recommendations reflecting uh, some of the other issues that uh, have been raised uh, uh, as you alluded to um, we have no knowledge of it uh, being subject to uh, any uh, uh, offsite effects and uh, or activities um, other than uh, the immediate preparation of you know, scarification of the land, et cetera, that usually gets done in preparation for servicing. Um, I, I guess I guess the concern from say. the members of council yeah. that that spoke to me is that the the issue we dealt with in closed session may be may be a f uh, the, sorry the property we're discussing tonight may be affected by the issue we discussed in closed session. If that makes sense, it does, it does to those of us who know what the closed session was. So, I, and I think that's the concern. There may be some who who have reason to believe that that is in fact the case that these properties are affected by the issue we met with in closed session. Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you at the council meeting said that uh, Mr. Toby wasn't here. Uh, could. Could we then defer it and, and ask Mr. Toby to come to an in camera since that's probably where we're going to discuss this? I, so I, well, I would like to make a motion to defer until we have more information. And, um, but just along that same line, because you did say, and I agree, that Mr. Toby should be able to speak to the issue. Um, yeah, it, it, so I would want him to speak to the issue we're dealing with tonight. Um, the yeah. issue, the issue that we dealt with in closed session. If Mr. Toby is to is to speak to it, um, I think he would speak to it through other through other processes. But right, right, yeah. But he's the main <laughs> right person in this. Right. Uh, so there is a motion to defer, uh, moved by Councillor Tadman. Is yeah. there a seconder, Councillor LeBlanc? You have the blank form, sir, Madam Clerk. Is that the last one? Uh oh. <laughs> and while a motion to defer is not debatable, I will ask uh, as I'm writing this out, Mr. Walsh, will this have any repercussions for the municipality by deferring this uh, through the Planning Act? Uh, through the Mayor, I don't believe there will be any, any Planning Act. Uh, uh infringements or, or, or constraints. Thank you. Uh, So I have it moved by Councillor Tadman, second by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council defer the Hamilton Woods West Phase 3 report to the November planning meeting. And I added the November planning meeting. I assume you're both okay with that. Is there any further discussion? No, there's no discussion at all. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion's carried. And the next item is a oh, the fencing guideline report. Uh, Mr. Walsh, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? To the mayor, no, no, no more information. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc, that the report dated October 13th, 2020, from the Director of Planning and Development regarding a fencing bylaw and related guide guidelines be received, that the Department of Planning and Development initiate the following tasks. One, initiate public engagement regarding matters that pertain to offenses by law for the purposes of garnishing views and opinions. 
The consultation activities be undertaken through use and reference to the draft fencing bylaw as found in attachment one. And two, staff to report back to council at the end of the public engagement period with recommendations for implementing a fence bylaw and or related guidelines or other options as may be determined through the consultation engagement process. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion's carried. Our next report is with regard to an agreement with DM Wills Associates. Mr. Walsh, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Nothing further to add. Uh, the dates within the agreement will be modified to reflect uh, something more updated, but uh, that would be the only, only thing to note. Very well, thank you. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that the attached agreement be revised in accordance with the shown edits within, that upon edits being made and required signatures of DM Wills being given, the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into an agreement with DM Wills Associates Limited for the purposes of providing planning services for a period of six months as may be extended as mutually agreed upon. Is there any discussion? How long would we anticipate needing to continue to extend this agreement? Uh, Mayor, I think it's uh, contingent on our filling in the uh, vacant position for the senior planner position. And are we are we able to cancel the agreement without penalty? Uh, yes, we are. Very well. Anything further? Well, go ahead, Councillor LeBlanc. To you, Chair, for the, the, the planner to see you. With bringing Mr. Wills in again, and you're going to be hiring another person, do you have anything pre-designed or going ahead so we can get the uh, grant money when we do this for planning and stuff? Any of our, any of our projects for our wish list done? Uh, to the mayor, I'm not aware of any grant programs that would be supportive of a lot of the planning type right. of tasks or activities we do. You're right. Um, mostly because uh, growth ex is expected to pay for growth for large, Part of it plans a little bit different that we're also there for the public interest so it's it's um kind of 50 50 uh when representing the municipality and on planning matters but uh, oftentimes there aren't a lot of grants uh can't get grants for official plan reviews and zoning by updates i've tried for years and it just isn't forthcoming any further questions all in favor any opposed motions carried Our next report is with regard to Stallwood Homes, Block 63 and 64. Uh, Mr. Walsh, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? For the mayor. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The council receives a staff report regarding Stallwood Homes Limited. The council enacts a bylaw to designate certain lands specifically described as Block 63 and 64. On registered plan 39M924, as shown on registered reference plan 39R14135, to be exempt from part lot control. The council instruct the municipal solicitor to prepare a transfer easement for the purposes of drainage from the landowner to the municipality prior to the registration of the part lot control bylaw. And the council resolves to receive and approve registered reference plan 39R14135 for lands as being exempt from part lot control as illustrated and otherwise attached to this report and that such plans be registered. Is there any discussion? Councillor LeBlanc? Yes, through you, your chair, to the planner. Um, in your uh, subdivision agreement, it says about drainage. On the drainage of the back, I think it's called Tallman, between Tallman and Crispin uh, uh, Road. When I walk the property, uh, basically I notice there's a swale where the water would drain, but the manholes are on this side. I was wondering if the manholes or the catch basin should be part of the swale. Because when the water's flowing down the swale, the catch basins are over here. Or is the swale at the wrong spot right now? Because right now the swale is grassed in, it's been done, but the manholes, the catch basins are over here. They're not part of the swale. And this development has been known in the past years for the past two or three years with drainage problems and catch basin problems, which they've had to redo on the back and on other streets in Royal Gala. But while I walked the property, swale is here, catch basins are over here. They're not part of the swale. I just want to know if wrong spot. Mr. Poole?
through you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm not familiar specifically with that part of the drainage. Um, the We reviewed this uh, specifically for the easements that are required as part of this uh, agenda. Um, I don't see the, the catch basin maybe part of a different drainage system, but you know the overall design has been reviewed and approved. So uh, I don't see any problems going forward with it. Anything further, Councilor Bateman? I apologize if this is written in there, but maybe in layman's terms, because I'm no planning expert by far. Block 63 and 64, and then it, the, the individual numbers, that's breaking down the individual dwellings. So can you explain to me so I can fully understand, like, what does this accomplish for them? Like, is this to give each individual spot a deed or what it is? Mr. Walsh. To the Mayor of the Council. Yeah, part lot control bylaws or as exemption from part lot control as it more properly described is uh, 200 of the Planning Act to allow a block on a plan of subdivision, approved plan of subdivision to um, no longer be subject to subdivision control. Uh, and usually it's necessary in instances where you have wholesale partitioning of a parcel to work around existing infrastructure, existing buildings. So in this case, the parcel, the block rather, was zoned for uh, a townplex, townhouse complex. So we can get a building permit issued, they get their footings constructed, and now we have an opportunity to do as-built surveying uh, and get the deeds quite accurate that way. Uh, and, uh, and then the survey goes in, does their as-built survey, and partitions out the new property lines and through this bylaw can just say, you know, that this will um, be put into those lots and that this as built townplex will have no encroachments because it's just, it's perfectly aligned to those new lot lines. Uh, and then you'll notice that um, we have additional controls. I mean, it sounds scary to take, uh, have subdivision control uh, re removed off the parcel of land, but in this case, building permits have already been issued. We have zoning controls on it. So uh, then there's expiry within that bylaw so that uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it uh, will resume being subject to part lot control in the future. Go ahead. Just so I should fully understand whether it's this subdivision or any, doing something like this doesn't impact ensuring that any developer ensures that their deficiencies are up to snuff before this is or any subdivisions assumed. It doesn't impact that at all. Mr. Walsh. To the mayor, no. The, um, the um, drainage matter, for example, though, if there's any problems with the drainage as it currently is, we have provisions in the Building Code Act to make sure the drainage is finalized. We have a lot grading and drainage plan that needs to be signed off eventually. Uh, and, and so there's corrective measures as the construction continues. So they'll be doing their final grading um, yet. Uh, and um, so those those things can be remedied still. And this this is uh, through the Building Code Act as opposed to this Planning Act tool. Councilor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. I was talking to our planner, Paul, earlier before the meeting. And just uh, maybe you could help me with this. Um, I got a call today on a Cortland Way, it's an unassumed road at the far end of it. And people are living in those home with no um, garbage pickup and they haven't got any any of the bins yet. I phoned the, the county and uh, they said they would get back and they haven't. So how does a, a resident go about getting the bins? First of all, right now they're care they've been there for some time, they're carrying their their garbage down to the end out to, uh, what is it called? Uh, Royal something or other. Royal Gala Drive. Gala, yeah. And, you know, that might be okay for young people, but older people would have a hard time doing that, especially in the winter time. So I guess I need to be clear, what what is our rules on an on a Zoom road? Because we do snowplow them, right? Right. So, 
if they're paying full taxes, we should be pro providing the service for their garbage pickup too. What one would think, and I have reached out to the director at the county to ask when uh, those residents can anticipate garbage collection at their front door. And will they, do they have to individually ask for the bins or do they come and give them to everybody? I believe once? they are delivered to them, but I'm waiting to hear back from the director. Okay, but you'll... Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm in touch with one of the residents. I don't know if it's the same one, but when I hear back, I will certainly be corresponding with them. Well, actually, I, I got the call from our uh, former CAO, Terry Karaki, <laughs> from all <laughs> There you go. It's his friend. <laughs> there you go. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes, to Mary Tadman's, Councillor Tadman's point to, to the planner, um, in June, I sent an email to the, the approach, they saw me, and uh, I sent an email to the warden for the county, and also I cc'd the mayor, that they weren't getting garbage by the end of, in June. But what it says in the bylaw or the, the development uh, or the subdivision agreement, as soon as there's one code of asphalt, the first code is put down, and somebody's moved on, they're entitled to garbage pickup. And I've been dealing with Mr. Son, the, um, the uh, mayor of Port Hope, the, the county warden, and I emailed them again in August about the same thing, the same as the street lights aren't on either there either. And I know that Mr. Poole has been working with Ontario Hydro and them and the developer trying to get them on but they've been living in those places and they take their garbage to the lot, the vacant lot right across from Crispin street. And that's where they're being picked up now, but this has been going on since the middle of June. Okay. Just want to let you know that. And to go back to one point, just as a question on the drainage, <clears throat> if the swale is there and the man, the catch basins over here. So this is going to be redone because right now the catch basin is part of the other people's property. This is the, the allowance for the drainage. Catch basin is over here. As you can see where the fence is to put them in. So that's what I, I saw today. So anyway, just, just as a point that we should look at it. Thank you. So um, we're just gonna make sure we circle back to the discussion point, which is uh, block 63 and 64, which are these 12, um, these 12 properties essentially. So Councillor Bateman, if, if your question is with regard to those 12 properties, you go ahead and ask it. It, it's linked to those and the street next to it on Crispin. And I guess it's a good question so I can educate myself again. I know everybody on Crispin Street and some of those houses are occupied in those plexes on the other street. And they walk the, uh, even if they get the bins, I think part of the reason for walking it down is, uh, I guess the crowdedness of the street, so to speak. So when we get to the point of assuming those subdivisions, even if the county gets the garbage bins up there, how do we determine I'm not sure if it goes through Mr. McGee and what if there's parking on those streets because you couldn't get a garbage town truck down either of those streets to save your life right now. So I think that might be part of the collection problem. With uh, so with regard to parking on those streets, um, specifically outside of block 63 and 64, so that we're talking about um, what the motion is, is there any parking controls at the moment? Uh, to the mayor, I might have to defer to, to Alan uh, McGee, who, who regulates the parking. I'd have to go back and see specifically what bylaws we have in place uh, to regulate that. Thank you. Mr. McGee, any comment? Uh, the residents can park on the street, so there's no parking prohibit, prohibited on, I think, Crispin Street there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they can park on both sides, and it's fairly narrow. Where you can't I get believe people. it's more specifically one that is or will be called Tolman Street. Okay. Oh, that's one over. Sorry. Yeah. But same deal. Yeah, right? same yeah. idea. Yeah. And and will we be consider considering parking restrictions in that subdivision, to the best of your knowledge, from staff, a staffing point of view? Staff can review it and see, you know, if it meets uh, the regulations and if we need to put up no parking. Is that space. something we would do after uh, assuming the subdivision? That's correct. There you go. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Tadman? I'll be very brief, Mayor. But if a garbage can't truck can't get up there, and I was up there today, and probably they couldn't, a fire truck probably couldn't. So I think we need to do something sooner than later. So I'm going to leave that uh, hanging out there with the planning department to see if they can affect the affect change so that we can provide services to these residents who are, as you say, paying full taxes. Is there anything further on this discussion? I'll ask all those in favor, if you remember what we're voting on. Those opposed? Motion's carried.
I have nothing under unfinished business, so we move into bylaws. Our first bylaw is with, with regard to the zoning bylaw amendment for the grant property, and it's moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The council gives the bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw under the provisions of Section 34 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 to amend bylaw number 140 2002, as otherwise amended of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton as it applies to certain lands located on Concession A, being Part 1 of Registered Plan 39R 13980 in the Municipality of Brighton. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motions carried. Next bylaws with regard to the pre-servicing agreement with Hamilton Woods, that item was deferred. So does this automatically defer or do I need a motion to defer? It just automatically defers. And the next one is with regard to the Hamilton Woods agreement, also deferred. And the next one is with regard to the planning services agreement with DM Wills. And I'll need a mover and a seconder that the attached agreement be revised with the shown edits within. And that upon edits being made and required signatures of DM Wills being given, the mayor and the clerk be authorized to enter into an agreement with DM Wills Associates Limited for the purposes of providing planning services for a period of six months as may be extended as mutually agreed upon. Is there a mover? Moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, second, sorry, this one is the um, part lot control of Stallwood Homes that we just discussed. Uh, it's moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc. The council gives a bylaw, it's first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to exempt block 63 and 64 on registered plan 39M 924, shown on registered reference plan 39R 14135 for part lot control, section 50, subsection five of the Planning Act. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. Now we move into question period. If anyone in the public gallery has any questions with regard to an item that appeared on the agenda, you may step forward. There are none noted. We have no in-camera session. Moves us to our confirmatory bylaw, moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. The council gives a bylaw, it's for second and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton Council meeting held on October 13th, 2020. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. I have a motion moved by Council LeBlanc, seconded by Council Rowley, that the October 13th, 2020 planning meeting adjourn at 7.28 p.m. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> any opposed? The motion's carried. Safe drive home, everyone.